Hey, hey everyone, it's Mango Mars. Today I have a speed paint for you. Now right off the bat, I wanna say that I know commentary isn't for everyone, so I'll be providing a non-commentary version somewhere on screen for those of you who'd rather just hear the spooky royalty-free music I've selected or mute the video entirely without fear of missing something. Only the best for my lovely audience. But one more thing before we start. This video moves very fast and can trigger some conditions that are sensitive to flashing lights. Please take care to not overdo yourselves. With that out of the way, let's get started. First, we sketch. This was a long suffering process for me, and I actually started some basic sketching before deciding to record. You'll have to forgive me for that. I use Clip Studio Paint's 3D model function to help me get a basis to where I'm gonna put my guidelines to save on time. I've been practicing going faster with my art because sometimes a piece can take me anywhere from one to three months. This one actually took only 16 hours over the course of six days, which is why it's sped up so much. Throughout this beginning part, you can actually see me scribble down like little notes and words. I usually do this while recording to give myself of the future an idea of what my thought process was, because my memory sucks. Though, I also don't end up finishing and posting speed paints like 9 times out of 10, so they're more for myself than anything. You don't really need to pay any mind to them. For some reason, I really struggled with the anatomy on this one. I even ended up changing the pose a bit. I actually got the original pose for the 3D model off the asset store from the user Bokikun, who has an entire arsenal of 3D model poses and objects to download. So right here, I know it was like really fast, but I put down a little arrow around the chest. This is because like going back to my bad memory I mentioned a bit ago, I was going to bed, but I noticed something I wanted to fix before I closed everything down. So I put an arrow to remind myself what I was thinking of fixing, and when I woke up I went, oh yeah, I gotta slope the honkers. So then I just relocated the honga ganga gongus, and then all was well. So now we begin the process of cleaning up a little and moving on to my second sketch. My second sketch is a relatively cleaner version of the first sketch where I add more detail and stuff. I know most people watching are probably artists as well and get the gist, but I'm a sucker for metaphors. Think of it like a clay sculpture. You start with like a formless lump and then a vague form and then you refine it further until eventually you get your final piece. So I adjust some things that I wasn't particularly happy with now that I can see a little more clearly and start on the clothes. I did have a rough draft for the clothes on the first sketch, but they were more of me figuring out where to put them rather than something I'd clean up for sketch two. Now here we can see one of my biggest weaknesses, clothing folds. I've tried to learn how these suckers work, but on my life I just can't understand it. I usually end up BSing it until it looks mildly acceptable. <laughs> Another big weakness of mine is shoes. I hate drawing shoes in particular. There's so much detail to put and the shapes are always different for every shoe, so to do a different style of shoe, you need to learn a whole new way that the shoe fits on the foot. It's infuriating to me. 
There's probably a million tips that I haven't seen, but I consulted my professional artist friend, Miles, who promptly told me, You might be boned here, pal. But being the saint of scoliosis that they are, they were able to help anyway. They asked what kind of boots, and I sent my reference image, and they happened to have similar boots, so they hooked me up with a new reference of their own boots. Shout out to my main man, Miles, for the feet pics, for real. Now here's where I struggle with the head. I still don't really know why it looked so weird, but what I do know is that fiddling with it made it look okay in the end. Shout out to my buddies Miles and Ghost for giving me some pointers though. Mainly, I don't know, neck too thick and head maybe too big? Put me back in my trash can, please. Poor guy. I did tag him in the middle of his gaming session for help. Now, see, I was thinking... Maybe it's the eye? So I drew the other eye to make sure that the one that shows is in the right place, but then I started having the age-old draw the other eye plight. Like usual, I ended up giving up and just flipping a copy of the first eye horizontally, because, like, that eye isn't even going to show, who cares. After a bit of futzing, I deemed the eyes okay for now and started to stress about the jawline being the issue. I even went as far as to draw, like, a little skeletal jaw for a second to make sure I wasn't totally goofing it. I just made some minor adjustments and moved on to cleaning up the hair. Now for the part that most, if not all, artists hate. The nose. I do a couple different styles before just doing a sloppy placeholder nose that I'll end up redoing shortly. I just needed a break and something there so I could picture where to put her mouth. And put the mouth I did. New nose time! It looks much better, but you can see I drew a little X on the screen. That's a note to my future self to redo it later. Though I ended up coming back to it the next day and not redoing it at all, apart from minor adjustments. I grew to love it, you could say. The eye and the eyebrow were done without much fanfare, but I did struggle for a moment with the eyelashes. Drawing the downward lashes is still a bit new to me, but I am so glad I learned to do it. It really brings out the personalities in some of my characters that aren't bubbly. The wee-hoo, whoop-dee-doo, you know? After that, I move on to the third sketch. I usually don't do this and only do a first and second sketch, but I ended up changing quite a bit with the second sketch and wanted to further refine things as well as use a smaller brush to make it easier to do my line art later on. And then I wasn't satisfied with the ear, so I changed that too. Then I played around with some shading ideas briefly before moving on to detailing the clothing more. I've never been super good at belt buckles and stuff, but it really looks better when you do it. That way it doesn't look like it's just like a thick waistband on the pants. So I always put in a little detail on the belt, even in quick pieces like this. I really hated the shoelaces. I 
always hate the shoelaces. That's why I just cheat with a little double colored brush and the convert brightness to opacity option in Clip Studio Paint. I just draw lines with my bordering brush and boom, laces. Although I did mess up at first and forgot to change the setting that makes it able to overlap rather than combining the lines. So I just had to manually add in the bit where the laces cross over each other. The back boots laces go much quicker once I fix that. After that, I move on to doing the bows for the laces, which I hate more. I messed up the first try because I forgot about, you know, gravity, but I quickly redo it without much fanfare. I do some quick cleanup between the two layers and that's that for the first boot. No matter how much I hate doing the laces, I always make sure to add the aglet. Shout out to my boys, Phineas and Ferb. Then we do the next bow, much easier now that we've practiced with the first one, and that's it for the laces. For now, at least. The fishnets were fun. I used one of my many, many fishnet brushes following the shape of the leg, and then I used the mesh transformation option to scale it to the outline of the leg, so it looks like, you know, she's actually wearing them. I start to trim them to fit the sketch for a brief second, but then I decide against it because I'm gonna just trim them later after the line art, because as easy as this was, I still don't want to redo it just because I trimmed it a little too short or something. Finally, we move on to the line art. I slowed it down a little just because I always find the line art portions of speed paints really satisfying. Now, I used to do the trick where you sketch out your lines and then like clean them up so they look like a smoother line, but that's because my hands are so shaky that I was incapable of doing it quote unquote properly. Now, there's definitely no shame about using that method. It's faster, can lend a unique style to the piece, and well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But since I got my new art tablet with a screen on it, I'm able to do longer lines, like, a lot easier. You know, since I can see what I'm doing at all. Believe it or not, for the first decade and then some that I've been doing digital art, I only used an 11-inch from corner to corner screenless tablet. I was never one for phone art or, like, literal tablets like an iPad or something, and I definitely didn't have the money for any sort of device that had proper, like, pen pressure. And that was the main thing that I wanted when I got my first drawing tablet, the pen pressure. But, you know, I had a job at the time back in 2020, and I decided to spring for them fancy newfangled screen tablets. And I adore my new tablet. It even has those handy little hotkeys on the side. I love it. However, the colors are like really off, and I've tried to fiddle with the settings, but I can't seem to fix it. So it kind of defeats the purpose of basically having a second monitor to do my art on when I need to have a copy of the canvas up on my main monitor to check the colors. But seeing how I only really needed to check the colors, it doesn't actually take up most of my main monitor and I don't need to have it open for the line art and the sketching. But man, does this thing help with lining. Obviously, I still have a crippling caffeine addiction, so I shake like a cold chihuahua. But it's nice to see what I'm doing, even if I need my stabilization up to 70%. <laughs> While I do the line art, I wanted to talk a little bit about the character I'm drawing. She's a new character of mine, and this is her reference image, hence the simplicity of it. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that my choice of background music is rather... spooky. That's actually because she's dead as hell, dead as a doornail, deceased, a corpse. Well, not a corpse. Maeve is a powerful spirit with qualities of the Irish folklore creature the Banshee. Although she's mainly just kind of a ghost. She can do the classic ghost stuff like walk through walls, float, go invisible, the usual, but she can also shriek loud enough to cause deafness and sense if a person is going to die soon. Most of this doesn't actually have an impact on her design other than the fact that she's deathly pale, has the sunken eyes, and hair covering one side of her face. While it was for fashion when she was alive, now it covers the wound that caused her death, which I won't go into detail about, and plan to draw later. Man, I had to look up some disturbing things to get an idea of what it'll look like, though. Don't worry, I always searched with 
things added on like, chill, I'm just designing a character. Just so that the FBI agent living in my computer doesn't come bust down my door. Good times. So here is where I start changing line art weight. It doesn't do a lot for this piece, especially since I chose to skip doing the part where I thicken places like intersections. But a little extra effort always goes a long way in art, I think. I don't know, I'm not an artist. But I saw a tip in a video, I forget which one, that was to make the line art thicker in the direction that your shadows will go. That's basically all I do here, apart from some personal aesthetic choices like thinning the lines on the hair and laces. Now we begin the long and arduous process of flat color. Sometimes I like to do the method where you paint like one gray layer and the rest are clipping layers on top of it, but that's not what I chose to go for here. 
Now I'm sure you've already noticed, but I color in a different color at first and then change the color after I've filled it out. That's just to make sure I don't miss a spot when coloring with the lighter colors, though I tend to do it with colors that are dark too, as I can't actually see dark colors well. I blame my anisocoria, but in reality I have no idea what causes that. I can't see in darker rooms, and I can't see dark colors. They all look, like, darker than they actually are to me. No clue! Anyway, I just typically go back into my color history and grab a random color. This time we had a deep purple for the most part. Nice, lovely. Another thing to mention is that I typically split my skin layers into two or three. In this case, three, because there's a spot on the left where the hand is like right next to the leg. So we have the head, upper body, and lower body. This is just to keep them separated so I don't have trouble when shading. Yeah, yeah, yuck it up. I'm one of those artists that always have a million layers. It's just, like, easier for me, especially on quick pieces where I tend to just slap an airbrush on big portions or blend large areas. Despite how long my pieces usually take, I am nothing if not lazy. Speaking of lazy, I think I'm just gonna leave you guys at the mercy of my spooky royalty-free music until I'm done with flat color. There's just, like, not a lot to say about it.
Now soon here, we're gonna begin the shading process, if you can even really call it that. What usually takes me months is the rendering process, so this is really where the quick aspect comes into play. I'm really not doing much at all, and I'm keeping the colors pretty flat because this is a reference image. Immediately, I go for the face before I get too tired and lazy to put effort in. I shade under her nose, and then I focus on making her eye look sunken and tired. Because she's dead. That's also why I'm using such desaturated colors for her skin. Rest assured, I know how to add a healthy flush to a character. That's just, like, not the goal for this gal. But I didn't want her to look, like, too dead. The whole thing with her is that she can pass as a living person in her day-to-day -day life. So there's still some color to her. Now it's body time. I do my basic lazy shading, when usually I'd be putting in a lot more detail. You can see later that there's times where I have to go back over the parts with the base tone because it ended up being too much for the simple style of shading I'm going for. Like, it was too contrasted, mainly on the legs. I think the fishnets kinda led to that because it kinda makes it look like it's almost darker. Even though it's not. But whatever the case, I didn't like how it looked. Quickly moving on, we go to the clothing. I'm not too satisfied with how they turned out, but I think it's the general lack of texture and the way dark colors mess with my eyes. Not to mention how dark colors show up on video. But for now, we're just gonna mess with the shirt until it's time to move on to the darker parts. I really have trouble with these parts. I actually could not see what I was doing. Sometimes I could, like, barely see if I tilted my monitor, but alas, that's just the way it goes for me. You know, this might actually have something to do with the fact that all of my characters wear bright saturated clothes. It's just really a chore to color dark colors for me. Sometimes I do it in a light gray and then slide the brightness down, but I really didn't feel like it this time and I just wanted to get it over with. Ugh, shoelaces. It's time to go back and detail the eye. I'll be honest, I have no system for this. I do it differently every time try and explain it, but my process is literally crammed together the first things you can think of on your mental list of how do people do eyes. I literally, I, I can't. <laughs> After a quick shading of the teeth, we move on to the hair. Usually I divide my hair into two sections, front and back. This time, there's a mid-hair, but that's just because she has sideburns that are visibly separate from the rest of the back of her hair over there on the left. In either case, I usually struggle with blending the front and back together, and I really did not have high hopes for this one, mainly because I was starting with no plan on how I wanted to do it. I ended up doing a very simple couple lines a section type of thing, and then going over it with a blur tool. I wanted to add more definition to it, while also not doing the things I sometimes do, where one part of the piece looks abundantly more detailed than the rest. I think I pulled it off pretty well in the end, especially since I tried something new, with putting some of the skin tone at the end of the bangs. I see more anime-style art do that a lot, to give them a sense that the bangs are getting more see-through over at the end of them, and usually it doesn't look good with my pieces, but I liked it on this one. Mm -hmm. 
past some time, I thought I'd talk a little bit about how this is the first thing I've uploaded about art in a long time. To be honest, I just really fell out of art for a while. I could give a tragic backstory, but that only goes so far as for the reasoning. After a while, I just lost the drive. It got a little better for a bit in 2019 when I started a series called Anons with my friends, but by 2020 I'd already slowed down again. It was a real battle to finish things, and I was never quite happy with how they turned out. So I just didn't force myself, and I gave it time. Now, these past few months, I think I've found my passion for art again. I've finished three pieces, including this one in the past month. And a little into the next month, because I am who I am. For those who don't know me, which I guess is going to be most of you, that's like really good for me. There were times I'd go like an entire year without finishing anything. Of course, I'd always like doodle, but that's kind of it. So I decided to start doing speed paints again with this newfound determination. Man, I think my last speed paint was my old characters Kansei and Sato. That's still one of my cutest drawings of them. Actually, hold on, I'm gonna check if that was the actual last speed paint I did. Oh wow. <laughs> I totally forgot about the doll speed paint. Man, that shit sucks. <laughs> the other piece better what the hell i'm still gonna like keep it up unlike my old five nights at freddy speed paints <laughs> those were horrible and i hated them let me show you <laughs> look at it i had to go to the nightmare foxy speed paint and screenshot it because i wiped it off the face of the earth <laughs> it's bad i wish i could say i got out of the five nights at freddy's phase but i didn't i did not i am still trapped this is a cry for help it's not it's not i'm joking Anyway, I typically don't record speed paints due to how long art takes me, and I want to get better at that. So I decided to start doing it again. Hopefully I can keep this up. I'm not gonna keep this up, am I? <laughs> Alright, that's enough about that. We're wrapping up. While I was talking about Five Nights at Freddy's, I jotted down her color palette, made a shadow, and chose a background color. I should be just about finishing up putting a neat little glow around her and starting to work on writing personal details about her. It's harder than it looks, man. I have horrible handwriting. I was trying so hard to be legible and pleasing to the eye. Now I'm just gonna slap down my signature in a couple places and write down a couple more little details about her somewhere next to her head. I do struggle with deciding if I move her personal details section, though. But whatever. I add the detail about the head wound that I mentioned earlier and draw what her other eye looks like, along with the fancy schmancy medical term for the phenomena. And then a mundane little pointer to her mole because it's an important detail, dammit. I add a fancy little glow to the personal details, a nice little border around the whole thing, and that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was pretty hard work considering my editing software kept freezing literally every two seconds, even when I wasn't fucking using it. I'm pretty happy with how the piece and video turned out, though. I really want to do more of these in the future. I don't typically draw much fan art anymore, so most of my drawings are OCs, whether reference or funny little hee-hoo art of them. We'll see about recording it, though. If you do enjoy this type of commentary and speed paint content, though, check out my buddy Miles. He does the stuff a lot better than I do. Uh, I think that's about it for my outro. I've never been good at these. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>